iRacing overlays, which one is best for you? This five part video series is going to answer that. I've spent the past few weeks testing the five main overlays on the market for iRacing as of the release of this video, putting them to the test with the goal of creating this comprehensive series that will allow you to make a more informed decision when choosing an overlay software to use. The five overlays covered are CAPS, Race Labs, SDK Gaming, SimHub and SimRacing apps, ranking them on the following five factors setup, user interface, support, streaming, and price. First in this series, and the focus of this particular video, will be caps. Timestamps to each section of the review are in the description below, in the event there's a particular part you're interested in checking out. Before we get into it, if at any point you find this content valuable, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos within this series. But for now, let's get into it. Let's first take a look at the setup and user interface of the CAPS overlay. Now CAPS is great in the fact that it offers a 30 day free trial with no sign up necessary. The link to this website is in the description below. Once you click on it, you'll see this white download button. Just click here and it'll download the setup file. Just be aware as you're downloading the setup file, Windows may give you an error of an unsafe file, but just go through the normal procedure of marking the file as safe and the download should continue. Once the download is complete, it should also add a desktop shortcut to your PC. Go ahead and double click on the desktop shortcut and you'll be met with a window like this. Now, CAPS is very thorough in its explanation about its usage, so I encourage you to go through the about and kind of get a gist of how it works. But what we're going to be focusing on here is the settings tab up here. And this is where we're going to be setting up and configuring all of the different overlays we want to display over our iRacing game. First things first, we want to give our profile a name. So your profile is going to be based on all of the individual settings you set down here, and then it will save into one entire overlay called a profile. CAPS allows you to have multiple profiles, which is great because if you want different layouts for different cars you drive or different classes, you can configure this within here and have multiple different profiles ready to go. Once you have your profiles set, you'll be able to find them here in this drop down. So going down here and looking at the different options available, let's click on standings here. Immediately, you can see the amount of customization options available here. Now we can't see these standings yet. What you want to do is click on this four box icon to open layer in a window. You'll see this grayed out box. You can drag and drop this around, but just to note that this won't determine the end position of the overlay. So don't take the time to position it in a place where you want it over your game. Just put it somewhere you can easily see it and then click on test mode. As you begin to style it, you can see in real time the styling change is being made. So you can really get to grips with what exactly you're changing and begin to style exactly how you want to see it. Caps also has a great feature. You can open these in a preview window, which allows you to see what the overlay will look like on the different backgrounds in iRacing. This of course is to allow you to see whether or not the details within the overlays are getting lost to say the background sky if your transparency isn't heavy enough. A really, really cool feature I thought. At this point in the video, you can pause it and really take the time to go through all these, tick on any of them that you want, click on test mode, see how it looks and take the time to style it how you want. Any of the Twitch options here will be covering in the streaming section of this review in a few moments time. So don't worry about that just now. Next thing to pay attention to is the system tab down the bottom. You want to make sure that the resolution shown here is set to the native resolution of the monitor you want to display your overlays on. And in my case, it's 2560 by 1440. There's also other options here, but these should be ticked by default. Now that you have all of your overlays styled, it's time to open it up within our profile window and configure the positions of the overlays. To do that, we're gonna navigate up here to open in a window. So if I click this, you'll see now that we're met with these blue boxes and these are all of the overlays that you have set to show. They're gonna show within their default positions and you can see down here, the pedals is shown in front of the fuel calculator, which isn't ideal. Obviously I want to show these in different areas. Now to move these, all I have to do is click on the edit button and then I drag and drop. I can bring them anywhere on screen. Once I'm happy with the position, I just click apply. Same here with the proximity indicator. I can drag it down into the middle of the screen, click apply. And let's move these pedals up so it's not in the middle of our fuel calculator. Next steps is to open up iRacing and jump into the car because you want to see how it's going to look when you're actually placed in the car to make any final adjustments to the positioning of the elements. 
What I like to do is set up a quick AI based race session within iRacing and when we're forming on the grid I basically exit out into the pits and sit in the car as I set up the overlays. That way everything will show and I'm not on the track getting absolutely annihilated by AI cars coming back around to lap me. Once iRacing is opened and you're in the car, there's one more thing we need to check to ensure that our overlays are going to display correctly. So let's press and hold escape to bring up the menu. We want to navigate to options and then the graphic tab and just ensure that your game is not displaying full screen, set it to border. That way the overlays can display over. Just to note, if you do want to run iRacing in full screen mode, that is available within caps, although it is an experimental feature. And in my own time using it, I found that it has caused iRacing to crash. So I just use borderless window. But if you do want to find out more about it in the about tab towards the bottom, you'll see this section here. And if you are trying it out, navigate to the settings tab and be sure under system to select open in iRacing. When in the car, just use this time to configure your layout and make any final adjustments you want to see. As you might find where you've placed some of the overlays, there might be some other information that you're covering and you wish to move them again. When in the car, if you click on the taskbar and then on the racing overlay tab, it'll then again pull up this option where you can drag and drop the elements. So you're free to place them over your game where you wish to see them. In the event that there's any iRacing elements placed in underneath or in positions that are not really optimal based on your layout you can set a hotkey to be able to move these elements if you go to options and then to control and then you want to look for an option called toggle ui edit it's down here on the bottom of other controls i have it set to e but basically what that does is when i'm in the car and i press my hotkey which is e in my instance you can see here a blue box just shows around the native UI elements within iRacing and I can move them and place them wherever I want on the screen. This is a really nice feature, especially when using third party overlays, because you may want to position your overlays in a position where there's already native UI elements. So set your hotkey and move the iRacing elements to your liking also. And that does it for setup and installation. Let's talk support. In my time using the app, I've been very impressed with the support structure behind it, not only from the developer himself, but also the community around it. They're more than willing to help out when you run into any sort of issues installing or setting it up. There's a very comprehensive FAQ on the website, which covers basically any and all questions you could ask about the setup, installation and troubleshooting of it. It also covers VR, the actual payment when you go to activate it in the event you want to continue your subscription, and then also for streaming too, which again, we'll cover in a moment. The Discord group link for the app is in the footer of their website. I highly encourage you if you are using this app to join their Discord. Their community is awesome in my experience. They've always been more than happy to help out and very quick to reply in the event that you have any issues with the app. Caps has also proven to be very easy to use for streaming. In the profile you wish to use for your stream, you'll see that there's a browser URL up here. What you're going to do is copy this and head over to OBS Studio. Now before adding as a source within OBS, ensure that you're already within a race session. If not, you won't see anything once the overlays are added. What you're going to do is navigate over to your sources tab. Just to note this might be in a different location than where I have it. We're going to add a new browser source and then name it whatever you want but I'm just going to name it caps click on OK and then we want to paste that browser URL into the URL file here the width and height is going to be set to the native resolution you use for streaming in my case it's 1440 and just click OK the display should show up in the native resolution with everything placed as you want if it doesn't it's a very easy fix come over to your source right click it Click on interact and you'll see this window pop up. From here, you can do the very same thing as we did with the overlay of the game. You can click on edit, drag and drop the overlay wherever you want to place it, click apply and then it's placed. So it's very, very easy to add it as a source within OBS. Adding Twitch chat and notifications is just as easy with caps. Before we go into the settings, we wanna come down here to the left hand column, right click on chat and click enable. Click on it and then go to settings. Here you need to add your Twitch account because this is where it's going to be pulling the chat and notifications from. Once that's done, head back to apps, scroll down to the bottom of the settings tab. And here you have Twitch chat, notification and counters. So for instance, if we click on Twitch counters, we again can click on the overlay window click on test mode so we can see exactly what that looks like same with follower notification and the same with our chat once you have what you want selected and styled click on open in a window again it'll give you this preview with the blue boxes 
So you can see where your chat is, you can drag and drop that to where you please. The same with the follower notification and counters. And it's really that easy to implement your Twitch notifications and chat into the existing overlay. Caps also offers a setup cover overlay. This is a really cool feature, especially if you're using paid for setups that you don't really want your audience to see as you're streaming. This is down here in streamers corner. If you click on setup cover overlay, here it'll give you exact instructions on how to add it as a browser source into your OBS the very same steps as we took previously with our original overlay. It'll give you the dimensions to set it to. Then if you want, you can also set a custom background cover using CSS. We won't go into too much detail with CSS on this, but if you want to add your own image, it's best to upload it to image site Imgur and then use the URL from that and add it into here. They also have a Twitch prediction bot and a bet bot available to their users. These are added once again as browser sources within OBS, but we won't be going into detail with these, but they're very, very cool additions to what is already a pretty comprehensive overlay. Pricing for caps is done slightly differently in that it's paid for through a Twitch channel subscription. This means the recurring costs may differ slightly for you based on your region. For me, as I live in Europe, it's €4.99 Euros per month, which puts it right in the middle of its main two competitors, being one euro and nine cents more expensive than Racelab's monthly cost, and a massive six euros and ninety cents less than SDK Gaming's monthly subscription cost when factoring in VAT. Of course, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free, or alternatively, subscribing for multiple months in advance can save you upwards of 15% but I suggest checking out the local subscription pricing page linked in the description below to find out the individual costs for you. Caps is an extremely user-friendly, intuitive and flexible overlay solution for iRacing. In my time using it, I have had little to no issues while streaming or racing in my own time, and whenever I did, the Discord community was quick to answer any questions I had posted. It's very reasonably priced considering the quality of the software, and with a 30 day free trial on offer to try it before you buy, I highly recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. So wrapping up, my final score for caps overlays is 99.5, because well, it's awesome. And that wraps up our first out of 5 reviews, thanks so much for watching. If you've got some value from this video, please let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment down below. And if you're interested in seeing the reviews for the other iRacing overlays within this series, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.